One of the hardest decisions in quilt making is deciding what to quilt in your borders and sashings. You've worked so hard to get to this point, making sure all the points matched, and stitching so far is all good, and there's so many choices to make. How do you decide? Well, let's take a look at what you're going to sash or border and let it give you a clue. I hear it calling out, hey, there's some swirls. And whoa, there's some diagonal lines I could use. You want to think of sashing and borders as a frame around your quilted area. You don't want it to overwhelm it. You want it to enhance it. This actually looks like something that you would get in a picture frame. That's what you're looking for. So. With that in mind, and following your quilt's suggestion to you, we're going to do the swirl border. And after that, we're going to do the diagonal straight line border. Are you ready? Hey then, let's start with the swirl border. We've done this before, but let's just review. This swirl's a little easier. We're going to just swing up, around, make a little hook. Now we're going to backtrack on that. When we reach the bottom, we're going to swing up again. It's almost like a roller coaster incline. We're going to go around, backtrack again, get to the bottom and swing up. We're going to do that throughout the entire border. Are you ready? Let's start with step one then. Here we go. Step two, just going to backtrack around what you just did on step one. And now we're going to continue on from there. We're going to repeat step one again, where we go up that incline for the roller coaster, back down the other side and around, on that little hook, echo back over top of that, swing back up on that roller coaster, back down around again, Make the hook, backtrack on that. Here comes time for that roller coaster incline again. Up, down the other side, around, and backtrack to the bottom of that design. Up, around, make that hook, and backtrack to the bottom of the design. I did forget to mention to you that this is a two inch wide sashing or border and that's pretty wide for a swirl like this. So I took my ruler and stitched one quarter inch inside on both sides and that made the swirl only an inch and a half and it seemed more manageable. Just a tip. When we did lesson number six, which is where this design is coming from, we used rulers. So we'll keep that in mind again, and we'll use rulers if you have them. I want you to take a look at this ruler. There is a quarter inch line inside the edge of the ruler. And then there's another line that is three quarters of an inch in, which is actually an inch it, once you add the quarter inch for your foot. Those are the two lines we're going to really work with. If you are not using this type of ruler, you will refer to your handouts for how to mark your fabric. Place your ruler at a slight angle to the parallel lines that are in your border and stitch your first line. You're going to stitch along the top until you can get your quarter inch line up against the line that you just stitched and then you'll stop again. Now we need to stitch over so that we can get the three quarter inch line on this line that you just stitched. That gives us a one inch spread between those two lines. And we're going to stitch up to the top row of stitching. We're going to continue on like that using the one quarter inch marking 
and the three quarter inch marking on your ruler to get the exact spacing that you need for these diagonal lines. My mantra for doing this was thinking of Big Bird and Tweety Bird. Tweety Bird's on the top, and that's where I'm going to only do the half inch spacing. Big Bird, however, is on the bottom, and that's where I'm using the one inch spacing. For those using the rulers on the machines, the half inch spacing is actually using your one quarter inch line spaced up against the last line you stitched. The one inch is using the three quarter inch mark up against the line you just stitched. And you're just gonna keep going like that to the get to the end of your row. Okay, this is where we start to fill in the gaps in between the two. We're filling in, we're doing these parallel lines going back and forth in the one inch spaces. That's going to make the half inch spaces puff up when you're all done. You can do them with a pointy edge or you can do it with a rounded edge. It really doesn't matter. You should try to keep it consistent with what you did in block number six. To get the rounded edge, you really don't have to work at it. You're just going to basically push the fabric back down to the next line. When you're getting the pointy edge, you almost hesitate for a second at the line and boomerang back and forth. The rounded edge is a little bit easier to do, I think. And you'll continue on with that until you get the spaces all filled in. And the reason you're getting two lessons this week is You've basically done this work before, it's just a refresher course. I basically wanted to teach you how you decide what to quilt where. That seems to be the biggest question people have when it comes to quilting. So hopefully this gives you a little hint how to choose, particularly when it comes to your borders and your sashing. It doesn't always have to be different. Well, folks, this is what happens when you let your piece talk to you. This is all the beautiful textures that we've created over the last nine weeks. This is our 10th week, counting the borders. We'll have one more lesson where you'll learn two more borders, and then we're going to go on to another new project that I have in mind. I'll see you next week. Bye.